In this video, I will be demonstrating an acoustic impedance problem in transats. The problem is set up with water and air with a pressure of 100,000 pascals through the entire domain, except for a region in the water that has a pressure of 101,000 pascals. Due to this high pressure, it will translate through the domain and cause a pressure wave. This wave will be transmitted at the interface into the air domain and also reflected back in the reverse direction through the water. We have set up the problem in one dimension and we're using compressibility. The objectives of this tutorial include to learn the compressibility features in Transat. We will be setting up air as an ideal gas and water with the Tate equation of state. We will also resolve pressure waves for our problem. We will also learn about user-defined functions. We will learn how to write a UDF with a C++ file that is used to obtain special information from the simulation. In order to use the UDF, we will have to run Transat from the command line. We will also use some special post processing. We will create a time signal. A time signal obtains information at a specific point within the domain. The time signals are as follows in our problem. We will have one time signal in the water and one time signal in the air. These time signals will obtain pressure information at each time step. We will then use our UDF to obtain the max and min values over the simulation time, and from these values determine a transmission and reflection coefficient. I will begin by briefly going over the setup of our problem in Transats. I have set the relevant 1D problem in the x-direction of a 1 meter length. I have set 200 cells in the x-direction, and set one cell in the y and z directions for our 1D problem. I've also defined a customized refinement with a point at 0.5 meters in the x direction. We have discretized the domain into four blocks and set symmetry boundary conditions for each surface. Under inputs, we have the basic equations of pressure, temperature, and U velocity. For reference properties, we've set pressure and temperature a velocity, and a length. We are using the level set method for our multi-phase flow and have a surface tension set at 0 0.072 newtons per meter. Under compressibility, the system pressure is set at 100,000 pascals. Our phases consist of air and water, with phase one defined as air. The equation of state is set as a perfect gas and the following properties are set for air. Likewise, water is set using the Tate equation of state and the following properties. Under simulation parameters, we have defined an unsteady simulation for 0.001 seconds with a significant number of time steps and initial time step of one e to the negative six seconds. We have a max number of iterations first time step of 200. We have also defined some adaptive time stepping parameters. Our auto relaxation factor is set to 0 0.74. Under our equations, we have increased the convergence tolerance to 0 0.001 and left the remaining values as default. Initial conditions are not set because we need an initial conditions file. Under output management, we're outputting the file format to pair view every 100 time steps and have defined the following output variables. For post processing, we have enabled non dimensional numbers and maximum values of variables. Now I will go through the initial conditions file for our problem. The structure is very similar to that described in the mixed gases tutorial. First, we have include statements for some C++ header files. We use an extern C call to use a C++ file in transats, and we start our function initial conditions. We initialize some variables. We get the processor number. We get the total number of blocks in the simulation and we set a variable x interface to 0.5, or the halfway location of the domain where the interface between air and water will be set. We also have a variable x wave set at 0.05, the
This will be where the pressure wave is initialized. We loop over our blocks in the simulation. We get the total number of cells in each block and set pointers to each of the transit variables, the x coordinate, u velocity, and phi for the level set variable. We then loop over these cells. We use the properties module and initialize by properties initialize, inputting the block index and cell index. We use a variable to store the current x coordinate, and we set a p init to equal to zero. Remember, we already set the system pressure to 100,000. Therefore, the rest of the calculations in Transat will be done at a difference to the system pressure. We then set P prime, or 1% 1 of 100,000, for our pressure wave. We initialize the U variable to zero throughout the domain. Using the properties module, we set temperature to 300, and we set pressure to zero. Unless our location at the x coordinate is less than the x wave, we set our pressure to our p prime. We then set our phi, or the level set variable, as a difference between the x interface and the current x coordinate. If our x coordinate is less than 0.5, we will have a positive phi value and it will be set to water. Otherwise, if x is greater than 0.5, we will have a negative phi value and the phase will be set to air. Then we use a properties setback to reset the properties module. Now we're reaching the interesting part of the tutorial. We'll begin to explain about the user defined functions. Before I can explain about the user defined functions, I'll need to explain about the post processing for this simulation. This post processing is done with a time signal xyz dat file. As long as you put this file in your project directory, Transat will create a time signal. The time signal file looks as follows. We have set a point index, so we want our two time signals, point one and point two, and that, then we've set the location of the point we want the time signal from in the x, y, and z coordinate. Now, our problem is 1D, so we know that the cell is located at 0 0.05 and 0 0.05 in the Y and Z directions. Although, if you put in a different value, the time signal will adjust to the closest cell. Otherwise, our important value is the location in the X direction. We want a time signal at 0.45 meters and 0.55 meters. These are the time signals in the water and air. Now I can explain about the user-defined functions. User-defined functions are created with C++ files, and they must be stored in a folder called user compile in the project directory. If I locate into the user compile directory, I'll notice three files. These are the three files required at a minimum for your UDF. There is a UI file list, and this will list the files, and then a user global C++ file, and a user global header file. Now that it's understood that the user compile folder is required with these three files, I'll briefly go over them. First, the UI file list contains a list of the files used. In this case, it is only userglobal.cxx. You can copy this line and add more files as you wish. Next, the user global header file. The user global header file contains a guard and define statement and includes some other header files. It defines the class user global with some private members, some functions that are defined in this user global CXX file, and some public members, some public functions that will be used in the UDF. Finally, we have the user global CXX file. At the beginning, we have some include statements for header files that are required, and then each of the classes are used. In the user global function user processing end, we run the UDF at the end of the simulation. We use some various variables, and if the processor is zero, we run it because we only want to run this UDF once and not multiple times if multiple processors are being used. 
we have some functions defined in our UDF. We have the extract minimum pulse. This will extract the max or min pressure from the time signal file that's put in the result folder. This is the time signal file that's created from the previous file I have shown. The time signal xyz.dat file will create the time signal in the result folder. With true input, this function will output the maximum pressure. With false, it will output the minimum. And we would also like the maximum pressure from the second time signal. Then we calculate the transmission coefficient and reflection coefficient as follows. Then we output the data to a file. The output file will be called acousticimpedance.dat and we will write and print the values with some special formatting. Here you can see how the previous functions are defined. To run our UDF, we'll have to use the command line interface of Transat, but first we'll still need the UI to prepare the simulation files. We'll go to the UI and go to Files and Prepare Simulation Files. Next, we can go to the desktop and open the build environment. The build environment is like a normal command prompt, except for environment variables have been set, so transat commands can be used. We'll navigate to our project directory. Once in our project directory, We'll use the command to run initial conditions using tmb underscore init compile dot py. And we'll also need to specify a number of processors. One processor is enough to run initial conditions. With the initial conditions compiled, next we'll compile our UDF. The UDF is compiled with tmb underscore link dot py, and it is necessary to include the option dash u. As you can see, this has created an executable UI transat mb dp dot exp. This is what we'll run that includes the UDF. To run transat, we use tmb underscore run dot py. Now we'll also have to use dash u because this will specify the UDF to be included. Also, we can use dash n to include a number of processors. In my case, I'll use four processors and I will run the simulation. With the simulation finished, we can check the results of our UDF as well as the pair view results. First, I'll go to the project directory. I will notice there is a file called acousticpedance.dat. This is the file created by the UDF. If I open it, I will notice it has plotted the data we requested. Next, I will load Paraview. In Paraview, I've created an animation showing the pressure wave move through the domain.